grab your beverages and turn up your interweb. Coming to you live from the Mookam Auto Auction in Houston, Texas, you're listening to Dudes and Beats. And we are back, everybody. We are back, back, back from the Meekum Auto Auction. I am Chris Jordan, your host. We've been having a whole lot of fun here. We've been having a great time. we got Steven and Pops here at the table with us right now. Randy and Andrew and Julie have gone out to explore and see what all is going on with us right now for our first five minutes. Uh, If you want to spin the wheel, you actually have to come over here, like us on Facebook, get a ticket, and we do a drawing at the beginning of every hour. Uh, Randy, if you would like to take care of this gentleman, that'd be great. We're actually live on air right now, Mr. Garza. Uh, No, you do not win a car. Sorry. Sorry. You win Dudes and Beer merchandise or a chance to be on Dudes and Beer. Uh, Like our good guest, Michael Wasson, who has just won a trip to be on Dudes and Beer for the first time. How are you doing, Michael? Doing great. Fantastic. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about... What brought you to Meekum while you're here and everything else? Well, my dad actually has a very passionate, a passion for Meekum Auto Auctions. He always actually has, and he became a member not too long ago, and we've come annually yeah. every time they're in town, you know? And Oh, yeah, it's a great show. So you do you got, just do the Houston auctions? Uh, the Houston, and last year was Dallas. Oh, yeah? Cool. Oh, nice. And, you know, you got to really appreciate the work that goes into these cars. You know, the blood, the sweat, the tears. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just it. It's, it. And that's what we were saying earlier in the, in the first part of the broadcast, everything else, was the fact that there is so entirely much work that goes into this. People spend exactly. literally half a lifetime sometimes restoring some of these vehicles. And what I love is the, bar, the barn finds, the ones that people have had since they were 16, you know, that kind of stuff. It just abs- it's phenomenal to me how long some people, because uh, we as men um, get attached to our toys. We get very attached to our toys. I recently had a microphone that I had to throw out that I've had like 25 years. It was one of those like, man, I just can't fix it anymore. <laughs> it just, it's lived its life. It's, it's gone. Uh, I can no longer fix it and make sure that um, it still works properly. But to see things like this come back to life uh, is absolutely amazing. And that's somewhat what you all do with your business. Explain a little bit about the, uh, about the business that you guys do. Well, I work for a company called Legacy Mechanical Solutions. Uh, we do HVAC. My brothers are technicians, and I'm the apprentice. Um, you know, I think it's interesting. You know, you go into an attic, and everybody just does a half of a job. They want to get in and out quick, and, yep. you know, it breaks down in a year or two, you know, and um, it's Nobody just not wants good that. work. They don't care. You know? Yeah. That's what's nice about having a family business. Everybody's close. We're close to our clientele. And, you know, it's just, it's amazing seeing, having that relationship with the customer. Yep. You know, and knowing that if anything happens to the unit, they are immediately going to call us. Sure. Yeah. Right. And uh, we'll be gladly to take care of them. And it's like uh, when you do a good job such as that, you know, isn't it like the best advertisement is word of mouth because, exactly. you know, exactly. you've done a good job and people pass that along. Well, it's, it's very much the same way with this industry and with this passion. Uh, you know, it, craftsmen know craftsmen. Um, it, and it, even in what I do with audiovisual technology, um, it's a very small, close-knit community, even though it's worldwide and across the country. You know business names, you know company names. Uh, they pop up all the time, and whenever you're into restoring cars uh, regionally, you know there there are hot spots. There are certain places that people just tend to take their vehicle to because they've been doing stuff for so long for so many people for so many people that they know that it's you know it is a word of mouth industry. Very right. much of the the automotive circuit is word of mouth and people finding out who you are, stuff like that. Um, would you say that that's true, Pop? I mean, cause, I mean, you you raced cars, you did that kind of stuff. It's a, would you say it's an incestuous industry like that? Well, it is. A, it is a good bet. Yeah, the uh, uh, 
the guys that the, the guys that I raced with, and we, we all uh, just come together and go do it. You know, uh, as far as uh, across the country, it's a uh, it's a brotherhood. Yeah, it's like a big family. You know? And, uh, you know, I was raised around cars my entire life. I was raised around AC my entire life. For as long yep. as I can remember, my dad handed me a wrench, or my brother said, come help me, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I don't know, I just think everybody should be like that. You know, just care. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, it's interesting that you say that, because you're right at the age of 16, and it's interesting to me how in the school system nowadays they've pulled a lot of things like auto shop. And, and, you know, Votech, that kind of stuff where, you know, kids like you learn to turn a wrench and you learn that it's okay to turn a wrench and it might actually be fun to turn a wrench. Like you may actually end up with a career out of this that you might actually like going to every day, you know, and, and loving it. Well, I'd like to say something about that. Because, Go ahead, Pop. You know, you, you strive uh, to... Become a, a good, good at what, what your craft is, whatever that that happens to be. Yeah. And the way you make make your uh, your business or your even your life successful is by uh, going the extra mile for and, and not not doing it not doing it particularly for a customer, but doing it for your self-satisfaction. Exactly. Right. I, I'm, I'm more, I'm harder on myself yep. than anybody could have ever been on me. Yeah. Because yeah, when I took it from somebody else, it's just construct, constructive criticism. Yeah. But when I'm looking at my stuff and I don't, and I'm not satisfied, that's, that's just... Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, it's just like this show. Heck, earlier during the second episode, we had a uh, we had a we had a slight technical issue, you know, and we ended up losing some audio stuff like that. And hey, it happens. It's a live broadcast. I don't have somebody over here running a truck um, like they do at Meekum. I don't have like I I am the host. I am the technician. I am the broadcast technician. I I wear so many hats that you know sometimes when it happens. You just got to be like, hey, man, we just got to let that go and roll on. That oh, yeah. Nice. No, that, that nice. Impala wow. is absolutely Impala. gorgeous. Wow. And it's, it's a, like, yeah, th those are the ones that I like seeing that are just, and, and ones like this one right here, the, the Sinclair service vehicle back behind it, the old tow truck, the old Sinclair oil tow truck is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, the old truck coming up. I, I really dig the Sinclair one. Uh, I'm not so much big on Impalas, but uh, I, I do uh, admit that one there is very beautiful. Like I, like I said, I'm a Finn man. I like I like fins on my cars. I wish we'd go back that. to it because there was some cool action. It's a 1960. Nice. Nice. Now, see, that's the kind of work that I'm talking about. You, know, you see, you see that. Big old boat. Go Big old boat. Just go out on a, yeah, go out on a date and uh, just, just cruise, cruise the avenue. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And, they, you know, that's, that's a lot of what this show is about, is uh, bringing people back to, to what they remember, bringing back the nostalgia. That's, that's why they do all of the memorabilia auctions. That's why they do all of the road art auctions. You know, with all of the old signage from the 60s and stuff. And it's super fun to come and see that. Like last year when we were here, before the main auction started, they had a, they had a thing of uh, signed guitars yeah. from bands. Like signed guitars and vinyl. And they had like a guitar signed by Kurt Cobain that sold for like 30000 yeah. Something like that. It's, and it's great because it's memorabilia and they understand the fact that along with cars comes so much else. Right. You know, kind of like, kind of like dudes and beer. Yeah. Um, people are like, what's it, what's it all about? Is it just about beer? And it's like, no, because there's so much more to being a dude than just beer. Um, you know, it's it's what we are. It's what we do. It's it's what we're passionate about. Like I said, guys love their toys. Like, 
like children. We take care of them like children, you know, and uh, we put a lot of effort into them. And when something happens, like you said, like when the technical issue happened earlier, it took me it, it took me a couple seconds to shake it off because it's a technical issue. And dang it, I'm beyond that. And it happens. It happens. But. Uh, yeah, it sure, is a, it sure is a kick to the pride nerds whenever it happens. Well, you enjoy what you do, you love what you do, and you do it because of the love of it. And so that's why you're the hardest on yourself when you don't do that good job. Or, you know, they come out to your expectation. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. That's well, it, why one is usually hardest on themselves well, it's, for it, that. Well, it's the fact that I know what I can do. And like, like right. Pop said, to cut corners on things just to get a job done, um, I don't do that. I don't do that. I go the extra mile, and it's not to make my client happy. It's not to not to suck up to anyone. It's that if this was my show, this is how I would want it done. Exactly. If this was my house, this is how I would want it done. So if I'm in somebody else's house, why would you not do it the way you would want it done? Like, exactly. it drives me nuts for an electrician to come in and wire your house, and you have 85 circuits in your in in most homes now you got two panels mm-hmm. and good luck finding one that's labeled like they don't even label it for you before you leave like that's just that's horrifying that's mm-hmm. just crazy sauce to me that uh that they have that going on it's and, dangerous what they have going on in the industry right now i mean oh, you're yeah. relying on someone you don't know and yep. i mean how can you trust that person if they're going to be in your attic for two hours and get out real quick and never call you back you sure. know, it's, it's yeah. dangerous because yep. one a fire can start instantly just like with your car you're not going to drop your car off at a shop and um, if yeah. you did not hear from word of mouth or if they did not right. have a label or if know, it didn't, didn't have, have good brand. reviews online yeah, exactly you yeah. know um, you know you don't, like I forgot who told me this but um, I was going to go get a Mako paint job on an old truck I recommended it to my friend and um, then one of my other friends just said it's horrible work. Yeah, no, it, it it'll last. Fun. It'll last seven months at the most. And oh my gosh, yeah, that's it, nothing. It's just terrible. And you know, the craftsmanship of these cars specifically are just amazing. Just like everything should be. You know, I feel like everything back in the day. You know, I feel like everyone should really listen to what the older people have to say because they actually know how to get it done right. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yeah. True. I mean, just like you were saying, don't cut corners. Yeah. Get the job yeah. done and treat it like it was your own. That's it. That's it. Like, it, it, it's no good, like, doing things wrong the first time then having to come back and do them again and fix it. And it's it's the same thing with cars, that kind of stuff. You know, like, it, you, you start putting Bondo on something instead of just replacing a fender or doing the fender right. Like, you could be getting into a lot more work later oh, yeah. uh, to have to restore it, you know, and have to get things done. And... It, 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 you know, to me, just so much of automobiles and cars um, relates to everyday life. Relates to everyday life. The concept of maintaining things, keeping up with things, making sure that, you know, you are adulting properly. Like a, a vehicle is really, to me, your your first test of adulting. Um, and... Like, if, if you can properly take care of a vehicle, if you can properly take care of a car, then uh, you're, you're going to be able to take care of a lot of things in life. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to preemptively see things and make sure that uh, you can, you can be proactive in life. Pro- you know, along those lines, when, when, what I've found is that, uh, People don't have a clear view of what they want. Oh yeah. And, and they, they'll start a project yeah. without having a clear view of what they want to come up with. If you want to come up with a uh, a, uh, a round around dirt car, you know that you're going to wreck uh, two or three times a night. You know you you, you want to build it for that. Yeah. But when when guys start, particularly, well, drag cars, for, for instance, because I have a lot more experience in that, when you start a car, you really need to know exactly what you want. Because if you don't, you wind up doing stuff over two and three times 
or more. Uh, your aluminum work, your the 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 direction you're going on in in your your carburation or or injection, whether it's going to be alcohol or if you're going to use yeah. you know get good gas yeah, or whatever, exactly. you got to have you got to have a, a an idea of exactly what the end product needs to be. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. And I mean, I, I do the same thing even whenever. It, it goes with so many things, so many things. Uh, we are an instant gratification society now, and we've literally brought ourselves to this point of, listen, I don't have time for details. But unfortunately, without those details, we're going to have a real hard problem getting your project off the ground. Yeah. Um, we're going to get to a point, when it comes to a point of decision, you're still going to have to make the decision. <laughs> Right. The only difference is if you make the decision now, then we don't have to call you when that point comes up. Right. We can just yeah. keep working. And it's not two days of back and forth of, oh, what about this, what about that? And, you know, it, it really is a point of preparation and trying to, trying to preempt things that happen ahead of time. And it's the same thing with automobile maintenance. Like I said, if you're looking at getting, and this was one of my favorites that I saw yesterday was this Bel Air wagon that's just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, I love me an old wagon and you know whenever you're getting a car like that it's a beautiful car it's in great shape but like I said before you go out and spend money on a car like that you really have to wonder A do you know how to get underneath that hood and turn a wrench and keep up with it because it's going to unlike your regular car which still requires regular maintenance it's going to require a little bit more regular maintenance um, to keep it tuned up right and going right you know, and either you need to know what you're doing or you need to know somebody that knows what you're doing. Yeah, you need a good friend. Yeah, yeah, and a really good friend <laughs> who's like, somebody, somebody who's like cool, with, let me bring my parts and some beer over and let's fix my car. You know, <laughs> not like a shop where it's like, sure, drop it off and pick it up 10 grand later. Yeah, uh, $90 an hour. <laughs> oh, my gosh. $150 an hour. That's it, exactly. And, uh, but but that's just it. You know, you, you, you could probably attest to this as well. Um Michael, that um, good work is not cheap, and cheap work is not good. And that, that's really the way that that comes about. That's really the way that it is. As, as we let you go from your guest spot here, Michael, I want to, number one, say thank you so much for coming on the show, coming and entering the contest, stopping on by the booth, downloading the app, all that good stuff. Uh, hopefully you're looking at carrying on the family business once you get out of high school and doing so right now you're kind of in family internship mode and learning a little <laughs> bit about it and all that um, but tell us a little bit about what you're looking at in the future what you're looking at this summer over the school break and you know, where you're looking to go with things business wise as you mature let's let's hear a little bit about the future of, of you Number one, I, I really want to try and focus on um, getting out of school. I want to try and graduate next year. So I might be working through the summer a little bit, and uh, I'm going to be working full-time with my company, well, me and my brother's company, Legacy. And um, after I get out of high school, I'm going straight into HVAC. Okay, um, great. I'm going to get my degree to become a technician. Yeah. And then maybe further down the road, maybe two or three years, I'm going to uh, become... I'm going to go to automotive school and I learn body and paint and, you know, it's a tradition. My brother went to Sam, you know, okay. to college and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and graduated That's pretty ambitious. Class and, That's pretty ambitious on your part. I mean, oh, yeah. you want to do H- HVAC and then, then do uh, go into mechanics. and It's the two trades I know. So I'm sticking with what I know and what I love. You know, my dad always said, you'll never work a day in your life if you do what you love. Damn right. That's that's uh, he's a hundred percent correct. Yeah. Well, why why two two such diverse uh, professions? I mean, the AC. I could. I mean, you can make a good living doing that. Right. Uh, but then you want to go to and learn mechanics for your personal personal use, or you want to use it in a business sense. Well, further down the road, we were possibly talking about maybe opening opening up an automotive shop uh, we this is just you know talk this is garage talk basically me and my brothers you know uh, this would be way in further in the future um, but we would for sure uh, the 
reason why I'm going in both trades is because I'm the youngest out of four brothers. So I'm a You got bit, something to prove? Oh, yeah, I got something to prove. You know, I, got I got to get ahead of everyone. <laughs> you know how it is. You know, dad, nice. loves, dad loves the cars, and uh, he loves doing AC. My dad's been working since he was 11. He started building grass. Oh, wow. He started from there. And he built himself up, so... Well, and, and that's just it. It takes hard work, dedication, just like building these cars, just like doing anything. Um, it's those that are passionate to succeed. You definitely have that. You've got the fire in your belly. So get out there. Get after it. Good luck to you, man. Godspeed. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for spinning the wheel of fate and being on the show. We can't thank you enough. Thank Take you. care. If you can't be good, be good at it. Yeah, good yes, luck sir. in your endeavors. And that right there, folks, is a prime example of, thank you so much, Michael, of, of what Dudes and Beer is all about. Michael, please, take a guest t-shirt. You were, you were a guest on the show, so you officially get a guest t-shirt. Yeah. All right, there you go. Hot dog. So that's just one example of um, what Dudes and Beer is all about, what... what was a great kid to have it, man. Yeah. And, you know, let's do a favor here real quick. Let's let's scoot these mics over. So Julie gets that one, and let's just rearrange some stuff because of our technical issue. Pop that one there back in front of you, Pop. And uh, we should be all set again for, for talking and conversing. So, Julie, what did you see on your adventures out there? Well, this time I actually met somebody who had five cars that he had restored and sold at auction today. Um, four of them they actually met reserve and he sold them. Uh, one of them he did not and he's taking it home with them and heading out. So he didn't have time to stop by. Oh. But he was pretty excited that he sold four. And he said that also he had one boat that was at a boat auction this weekend that also sold for more than reserve. So he wow. was well, he was flying yeah. pretty high. All right. So I was you excited know, to talk five, to him for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> that was a profitable weekend for him. Yeah, absolutely. So that right. was pretty cool. That's all I really did. I talked to him. I looked at some cars. Um, we saw actually the car I was talking about. My son has a 97 BMW convertible yeah. that's coming to yeah. in two weeks. Wow. They actually have one that's here that's like not quite as in good of a shape as his. So he was pretty excited to see it in real life. All right. All right. <laughs> there's, there's nothing quite like getting to uh, see your car before you get it. <laughs> doing great. We, we've got a visit. Doing fantastic, David. David Morton from Meekum just stopped by to check in on us, and we are we're, we're having a grand old time, David. Thank you. They treat us so so well here at Meekum. We can't thank them He's, enough. He's uh, pretty impressed by our koozies. We should give we him more. Oh wait, we did. We did we give did him more. We we would absolutely love to thank David Morton, our media relations agent for uh, Meekum, as well as the Meekum family, the Meekum staff. They're always so gracious uh, for having us here and making us a part of this. Randy is actually outside right now at the SRT event. Uh, we were trying to do some live stuff, but apparently we're having some cell phone issues, things like that. So some of the live on-air coverage may not necessarily come through, but we're still going to be giving you fantastic interviews from right over here. Pretty soon we will be having a representative from Curing Kids Cancer, the, the main charity that works directly with Meekum, uh, as well as our friend uh, Sean Tajapur um, from West oh, Houston cool. Muscle if will be stopping by in a little while. Uh, our so, coming. Or a little car or a dinosaur. Yeah, we got people coming by, grabbing things out of the prize bucket. If you want to come and win a prize if you're here at the Meekum Auto <laughs> Auction, stop on by the Dudes and Beer booth uh, like our Facebook page, you will be given a ticket to win the Wheel of Fortune and uh, see what happens. Uh, you could, just like our last guest, Michael Wasson, uh, win a five-minute guest spot on Dudes and Beer. You can win a t-shirt, you can win a koozie, bottle opener, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and it, Honestly, I think he got the prize he wanted. I think so. Oh, definitely he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants to be on a show for five minutes on the interwebs. I don't know anyone that doesn't. I wanted to, so I started a show. Well, and now you got too so, much. 
And <laughs> Where's your five minutes? <laughs> Sometimes I wish I didn't have five minutes. Hey, mm. remember I keep mentioning that Black International? There is the there is the Grand National right there. Right. That is that is a thing of beauty. I love those vehicles. It was one of the fastest stock production cars ever put on the American road. Those things are just dirt nasty. They're great. It's got a turbocharger, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah. Now, here in a minute, on our next break, we will go out and check out some of the auction floor again. All that kind of fun stuff. Have you guys had a chance to wander out onto the auction floor and check out the action? Check out all the... Just a little bit. Yes, just, a little, just a little. I don't think there's any corner that Pops hasn't gotten to yet, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he gets around. He gets around, most definitely. He, uh, I've seen everything now. So. He is a man of action. He's yeah. everywhere that you want to be um, and every way that you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pops. We're going philosophical on this. <laughs> but hidden meanings here. Sit, sitting here and looking at the, the new line of cars that they're bringing up, uh, we've got a beautiful, beautiful, like, adobe colored Cadillac with gold accents coming up. Uh, I think I just saw a Porsche 924 roll up into the line a second ago. Um, that, the brown Porsche back there. I can't remember if that's the 924 or not. I know that they had a 924 here yesterday. Well, we've got some, some beautiful old Cadillacs coming up. I was yep. going to say, look at this Cadillac that's these about are, to pull up. These are really beautiful. Well done. Uh, I, I looked at both of them, and they, they're almost flawless. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and that's what I love. Whenever, whenever you, you can tell the hardcore bidders and the people that are going to be putting something down and thinking about it, because as they line them up and they're sitting there, you'll see them come by with their flashlight and start looking at wheel wells, start looking at the inside mm. of stuff. Man, look how that one just... Everything about it is awesome. Yeah. Those, those are, are pretty machines. This is, Indeed. This is uh, his first one. His... Uh, Both gorgeous cars. The first one, I, I don't, I don't know exactly what you call that kind of, yeah. kind of a titty pink is yeah. what I used to call it. So uh, I go it's with a gorgeous car. I go with Adobe. 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 Well, I, I like titty pink. Anyway. Titty pink works too. It is pretty pink. It's like salmon. Actually, yeah, right. salmon. Like, oh, yeah, salmon. Salmon. Salmon, yeah. Salmon, yeah, big yeah. pink or salmon. something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> salmon. <laughs> but that, that car With is... With that gold? That, it's almost... It is immaculate. Yeah. You, you look down the side panels... Look at that car, man. There is... Yeah, there's there, no... It is flawless. There's no warp. There's no orange peel. Uh... And, and like we said, you do you do get quite the variety of cars here at Meekum. You get a lot of new stuff, you get a lot of vintage stuff, but you also get a lot of stuff that's like, hey, here's a great one that's already started on. Started. That, that you can finish up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I said earlier, I, I, I have to to tell myself, this is an auction, not a car not show. A show. The car show's over there. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to go see Flawless Perfection. Yeah. yeah. Hop on over to the other side of the arena and check out the check out the show. But aside from that, it's it's about cars for what they are. It's about you know some of it's even about just cars for cars' sake. You know, it's it's pretty phenomenal. But uh, what's what's that all about? Somebody get? just gave us a business card. It's 405 Brewing Company. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. hey, hey, hey. We are down with that. Hey, okay, hey, 405. Hey. little shout-out on air. We got Trey Carson, the co-founder, just stopped on by. Where's, where's he located? Um, 
not sure, but let me look them up on Facebook or That's Instagram. It. We're going to get to Google stalking a possible mm. guest here because <laughs> we just had a co-founder of a brewery come by and casually hand us his card as we podcast. So that's always fun. It's always great. I like I like networking like that. That's why I love having Julie here because Julie is like a social butterfly when it comes <laughs> to that. She In she Oklahoma. shed she shed her chrysalis long ago. Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, it's in Norman, Oklahoma. You know, uh, I want to I want to make an, an observation here. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, Look so. at the people's faces around us. Yeah, it's nothing but joy. It's happiness. Oh yeah. I mean, everybody's here for one reason: uh, the the excitement, uh, the even the, the workers, the, you know, mm-hmm. the ones pushing cars and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah everybody's happy. Thing, I think. It's really, it's there. really a, a joy to see people being so happy at an event that that everybody has in common. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's just it. That's what we were saying: is that you know, when it comes to a car, it, it doesn't matter. You can tell anybody, even people that don't drive, have a car story. Oh, yeah. Even people that don't drive. I challenge you to find um, an American person over the age of 14 or 15 that doesn't have some kind of wild car story. You know? Um, They're some of the first ones that stick in our mind, I think, mainly because uh, they're, they're some of the first ones associated with personal freedom. Yeah, absolutely. You can get more than just a mile or two away from your house for the first time without yeah. having any kind of supervision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's really that that point of arrival, and it's the, the first point coming of age, really yeah. major. Well, it's, it's, it's child, childhood memories too. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. some of these old boats, we used to on long trips crawl up in the back back window and watch the stars. Yep. Yep. I mean, and. Somehow or another, we lived lived to see the day that we were forced to wear seat belts. <laughs> Somehow we made it through all those times without them. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thank God. Thanks, Ralph Nader. Yeah. I think seat belts are a good thing, y'all. Seat belts save lives. It is so. Good. It, it, it is. Uh, let's, let's see. We have Yes But Why podcast chiming in right now. Hello to Amy and Wendell and Patrick, the co-hosts of Yes But Why podcast. What's up? Uh, they're saying, it's so cool that the guy who won the five minutes spinning the wheel is on the show right now. Um, well, yeah, that's what it's about. You, yep. you get bum rushed. Uh, you're gonna, if you're going to come up here and win a prize, we're going to give you a prize to win, man. Yeah, well, that's that how five, we look that at it. That five minutes turned into 20. It sure did. <laughs> <did. laughs> hey, it that's what it's guest. like. It was a great guest. It was good conversation. Yeah, the he was a very was enlightening awesome. young lad. I love, I love as a former teacher, as someone who used to work with junior high and high school students, to see somebody of that age that has such focus in their life. He's very level-minded and, and focused on and what knows, he wanted to do. And knows, yeah. knows what his path is, knows what he wants to do, and he's going to go at it. Yeah, I still don't know exactly what I'm going to do when I grow up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, no. not quite there yet. And I, I really like this retirement thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good plan. <laughs> you got plan. plenty of time to figure yeah. it out. Go fishing. Can I just retire now as a grown-up? You could technically, what the quality of life would be. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's true. It's that's, true. That's, that's and not from dudes and beer, not from dudes and No, beer, of never. course not. There is no retire. You retire from dudes and beer when you die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how that works. Maybe I'll haunt y'all. You don't know. There's no 401k. You can come be a, you can come be a guest. A ghost guest? I'll, I'll, I'll make a ghost microphone. <laughs> I think it looks like the auction line is starting to wind down for a minute. Oh, no, no. There's another line of cars coming looks right like, there uh, behind them. It looked like this it, one might uh, be a 57. Once, once 193. We've got 193. Yeah. And we're just at 94. So oh, we've got yeah, another we got 100, some, 100 some some cars. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the auctioneer needed a break. It, 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 that's just that's it. Some of, of the auctions are over quick. Some of, them take, yeah. some of them take a while. Yeah. Like it, it can go for a while, I'd, man. You know People what, going back and forth. I'd, I'd love to just get up there and, and bid, first bid on every car. Mm-hmm. Hello. Do Hello. I have $500? Just be that guy. Yeah, 500, 500. 500. <laughs> just to say you bid, you know? Just, just to say, say I, you did it. Say I was bid. And then it, 
I wonder who decided I, that they I thought that that horse was going to My wife would kill me. No, she wouldn't kill me. She'd love it. If I'm not mistaken, that was one of the original options. Was Brown. Brown. It's an odd choice. Huh. Yeah, right? Really? You know, here Brown is being the uh, reminds, option now. Reminds me of the poop emoji. <laughs> I shouldn't say that too loud, and of course I'm also on the air. But that's okay. <laughs> you can be on the air. It's just a 21 and up. Yeah. We're all right. We're all right. Ooh, but that raspberry color one behind it is pretty dope. Yeah. 35, that's uh, Chevelle. What Chevelle, 66, I believe. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful car. So, yeah, and whenever you come a, to the... It's a 454, too. Just so you, just so you understand some of the lingo, those of you that are tuning in for a, a podcast coverage of an auction for the first time, it works almost the same as eBay, um, except for instead of an enter, you raise your hand or paddle to be recognized as a bidder, um, and much like eBay, it cascades toward the end. As the end of it comes around, it gets much more frantic. Mm-hmm. It gets crazy. Um, but whenever you hear us say the term "no reserve," uh, right. that means that the the begin the bid starts at anything. The bid starts at anything. And if you should be watching uh, MSNBC and catching this coverage, which is fantastic, John Kramer and all the crew do such a great, great, great job covering this awesomely huge event. And. God, that's a that's a beautiful deep warm. Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's like a merlot. Yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna keep likening the cars to food that's what and I was wine. Kind of thinking like a <laughs> wine. Yeah, kind of hungry now. <laughs> Thanks, Jewel. It's definitely a wine color car. Look at this cherry. Is that a Mustang? That's a SRT. SRT. That is a Dodge SRT. Dodge. That is what is. Sorry, sorry. That is what is actively outside giving people free thrill rides. Oh wow! That is what you get to ride in. I wonder how long that line is. Those, I guess Randy can tell us about have, it when he comes uh, back. Over yeah. six hundred horsepower, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Stock. Stock. Yeah. Stock. It is a. Uh, it is a monster coming right out of the factory. You know, it's amazing that for so long back. Like in the 70s and, and the 80s were the doldrums of, of uh, uh, e- the EPA and, and all the, the crap that they put on these cars. That today, today the, these motors are, are putting out three times what they used to. Yeah. And it, that's all. That's all technology. Yeah, it's all micro motor calculations. Is a, a motor is a, is a motor, but the way you tune it, the way you carbureted. Yep. Your, uh, yeah, the air to fuel mixture, everything. Yeah, the whole thing. And uh, it's amazing how much horsepower you can get. And then you stick. Then you start in it with the turbos. Yep. And oh, turbos. Turbos are just greatness if you can uh, afford the gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and this this SRT is one of the uh, one of the Hellcat models that we were talking about earlier. That's just ungodly, ungodly. And yeah, that know, would explain the cat symbol on the side. That's right. That's right. And it's uh, it's, it's just crazy to me. Uh, like I said, I've I've known some friends that had muscle cars in the past. I remember a buddy of mine in college that had a. Uh, had a Mazda Miata with a short block dropped in the back. Had, had it modified to have a short block V8 in it. And that was just scary because the oh. motor weighed more than the car. Right. And, yeah, that was like a death machine. Man. And it hauls ass. Oh, it can't not haul ass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can barely touch the gas. And in it's the like thing. you're in a Barbie car. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. It was crazy. No, I had a friend with uh, same thing, really. Uh, he put some big old engine in a Miata. And we got on 35, the interstate, and man, it was scary as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Probably more scary since you were on 35 and not actually going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Just, just sitting there. <laughs> just sitting there. 
I'm so scared the world's not moving. Oh, Why? I'm scared. But a real big part of, of building any car is the suspension. Uh, there, there again, you got to have a, a vision of what you want when you're building a car. Sure. It's something that I can't stress enough. You need to have a vision of what you want. And, and because everything, everything depends upon uh, that vision to, to come together. Got a beautiful 56 coming up here. Yeah. White on black. Black on white. I guess that's more of a silver. Yeah, I was going to say that's more of a silver gray. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's like sort of a pro gray. Yeah, it's some silver going on in there. We'll see once it gets closer. It might be the lights. Closer, get closer. Two more feet. Black. And that's what amazes me is that there's these dudes here all day long that do white. nothing but push vehicles. It is white. Yeah, that was just the lighting. Yeah. Wow. That car. That is just like the classic. That's, when that's you like picture in your brain a classic car, that's it right car. there. Well, and look at those look at those gorgeous foose wheels that <laughs> would cost you about as much as a decent used car. Right. Oh, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's, I've, there's, I've had cars that, that cost less than that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've, I've, I've purchased a couple cars that probably didn't total to what those wheels cost. And I, I love Foos design. Foos is just, I mean, they, they have such, such great work that they put out. And they, they've really come about in the, uh, they did, I'm not going to say come about in the last few years because they've, they've been around for years and years and years. But because of a lot of the hot rodding shows and stuff like that, really become a lot more prominent of a name than they were and kind of like Hennessy racing uh, you know you see a lot more Hennessy vehicles out there now and Hen- Hennessy modded uh, vets and that kind of stuff I know that there were a couple Hennessy models out here there was a Hennessy GT40 that that black GT40 that passed us earlier was a Hennessy model uh, and yeah it's just it, it's phenomenal the uh the number of customizers that are out there now because of shows like Gas Monkey, um, because of shows like uh, Jesse James and um, OC Choppers really yeah. started a lot of that, a lot of that. Reality. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the reality building. build, the reality build shows, you know. And, and uh, counting Cars is another one. Counting Cars yeah. is another one, yeah. That was kind of a spinoff from uh, Pawn Stars. Uh, yeah, right friends out there in L.A. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's just and he wild. does some he does some fantastic work out there, too. Yeah, because, I mean, it, it used to be, and I even remember whenever I used to travel with my dad uh, selling tires. He sold tires. He'd come and pick us up, and we'd normally make a couple stops with him before the end of the day and the beginning of our weekend with him. And, uh, yeah, it was strange, like... We, we went to shops all the time and, you know, I don't know, I guess you didn't necessarily see as many custom shops as there are now. It's like there's a huge rage of it. Yeah. Um, and I guess back then it was really more of, uh, like we were saying, it was word of mouth. People knew people. And if you knew somebody with a 67 vet, uh, hey, where'd you go to get your... Chrome, where'd you go to get your vet chrome dipped? You know, where'd you go to have your chrome redone? I really like the work that's being done. Um, and it, it was much more of that society, whereas now you're dealing a lot more, I think, with the online customization of things. You're dealing a lot more with the lo- online mods, uh, mod packages that you buy for engines, mod packages that you buy for the body style, stuff like that, as opposed to going in really talking to a rep, talking to a shop manager, talking to a shop owner about what you want done. Would, would you say that that has impacted the, the collectible and custom building industry at all there, Pop? 
Let's just say that again. No, I, I didn't quite. Well, it was. It, it's, it's just the concept of online ordering and the idea of being able to get stuff online. Like, you know, it's one thing to go out and visit a custom shop and have them, you know, okay, well, this is the style that you're looking at. Maybe you should look at some wheels like this. You know, these are a little, these outlaw ones are a little bit closer to what was on the car whenever it came out. But these are pretty stylish now and they're a spin off of them. And they're being put on a lot of stuff. So, it's interesting to me to see the dynamic that's going on between, like I said, you didn't used to see custom shop uh, shops, custom car shops, every few miles around a city. You see them a lot more prevalently now, custom car shops, custom bike shops, uh, places that do that as opposed to just your standard bring it in, fix it up, and they'll do some bonding work, stuff like that. <coughs> fender bender that happened in front of us here. Right? Oh, yeah. Can you imagine that? Oh, my goodness. And they, at the speed they're going? <laughs> that, would be, but still, that would be heartbreaking. That would be destructive. You know, the mail ordering online stuff, I, I, I think it might have impacted it a little bit personally, but, uh, you know, buying parts, you know, say, like, anything you buy, you know, say, through, uh, you know, a certain place that can deliver at a certain time and bring you what you need and all. And, and, oh, well, uh, well, hey, don't get me wrong. I'm an Amazon fanatic. Right, right. You know, I, was, I mean, I, forgot I, I, can say that, I yeah. miss my Amazon Prime now uh, because we moved five miles closer to the Amazon facility, but for some reason do not get Amazon Prime Now service. Uh, there, and, there's, there is that chart. You, yeah. There's that beauty. Ooh, a charger. Ooh, I like me a charger. With some beautiful Cooper Cobras on there. Love me some Cobras. My father worked for Cooper years and years. And I, I would buy that car. You would? I would that's, a, that's one. Yeah. That's one of the, the other models that I would buy. Yeah, so it's like I, a cupcake. A if we lick it, do we claim it for our own? Right. I, I think so. <laughs> body body work on that one is immaculate. It's immaculate. Deep, deep what, what would you black. give him? Uh, uh, a plus on that? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a, definitely an A plus. Yeah, and it's it's been restored to great shape. It uh, is in absolutely beautiful condition. I used to ride uh, to school uh, with a buddy that had one. Going to uh, the uh, trade school there in Denver, and it was just—it's just an, an amazing vehicle, amazing yep. vehicle. Yeah, and and just so y'all know, everybody, Julie is presently awing over lot S99. It's adorable. Which is a beautiful Fiat 5100C char uh, torpedo. Topolino. Topolino is the name of it. That was one of the convertible versions. Does this one come with clowns included? or are they You extra? shut it. That is not a clown car. That is adorable. <laughs> Another example of, uh, of European design yep. and function. Uh, yeah, that's cute. Uh, it doesn't have to function beyond just looking cute. I, th I think it would Sorry. be really fun to drive, really. <laughs> It's not like I'm going to take it on a highway or anywhere. As, as long as the steering wheel works inside your garage, that's all you need? I mean, I'll cruise it around the cul-de-sac a bit. Maybe take it out for parades. <laughs> it's make, so cute. Make sure you bring the clown. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm tiny, so I can be in a tiny car. When you're five feet tall, you can have a small car. True. Sure. You know, I'm here to tell you, as a tall guy... A Fiat is not a horrifying fit. No, it's got a tall little... It's got a tall roof, and the seat goes way back, and it's a deep bucket seat. So, you're... <laughs> See? It's got the... So, it might not actually work The for roof yeah. out, right? So, you the can hang your head out like Mr. The body not spectacular on it, but I feel like I can I can handle some dented fender. You could, you could live? Yeah. You could live I think with so. it? I think yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, it's not even pink, but I love it. Mm-hmm. I like the little sportster coming up behind it. Yeah, that's cute. You know, I, I, I never was a Porsche fan. 
I just uh, there are, there are only a couple of my and that's one of them that I love. Um, there are really only about three models that I I really enjoy looking at. Like I I love looking at a Porsche 944. I like the 911. I love, I love that. That was the that was the that was the round back. One. I like the 94. Not not the full right. slope. But it had the slope back, but it was square. Not, more yeah, squared off. Yeah, it was it was it, it was much more along the lines of the 300X looking somewhere along that. It, it looked like a you know a little bit a little bit closer to that style of a racing car. This one's but, cute though. I wouldn't kick it out of my garage. No, no, I, I'd be okay with it. I'd be all right. I'll, with I'll it. be good at driving that car. Yeah. I'll be one happy dude. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cherry yeah. red Porsche. Ooh, I want that I one. I was going to say, that I'd be a little bit. That in my garage, y'all. I'd be a little bit. Is that a Galaxy? Ford Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. I, I, and uh, those are the ones uh, that I'm just all leather. about. Even whenever I see him driving by me on the road, I, I try to keep pace. Like I, I like I enjoy looking Probably at them and watching to keep the Fairlanx pace. too. Uh, they, we did. Uh, I, I didn't get to see any of the Fairlanx. Uh, they, they went through uh, earlier in the week, but uh, those old Ford Fairlanx, man, yeah, just good memories. Yep. Good memories. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, there, the, the, there's there's a racing car, and I understand the concept of owning a racing car. If I, if I lived out near a huge open stretch of country road or something, it would be all about a racing car. I live in the city. Uh, and like, I, I do some work with a guy that has, like, you know, he's, he's got his Alpha. He loves, he, he loves his Alpha. Um, and it's one of those, like, but, but you, live in, you live in Austin. Yeah, imagine but being it, back in Angle parking on Congress on that car. In that, that Ford? Like, it's in not that possible. galaxy? <laughs> You're like nine-tenths of the oh, way out you know, of Congress. That's, that that's when I just pull straight up and take five spots. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, and what? And I have seen that. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Austin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's All the some time. very entitled drivers out there. <laughs> but it's... Yeah, I, I would I would much prefer to have a car like that any day of the week. I'm a slow and low driver whenever it comes to my classics. Just put it in third and cruise, you know. I, uh, and the interior on that thing is gorgeous, too. It's that, that nice old school blue. And it kind of almost looks like one of them, like I was talking about, the, you know, still needs a little love and TLC to... To get it up and going right, but yeah, it's definitely not overly done. No, exactly. I'm not sure about the exactly. blue though. I think I would pick a different color, maybe oh, like no, tan or something. No, I, I love that blue. Or like cherry red with some white piping. I, I like the blue because it's got the gold piping on it. Uh, you and the gold accents. I know, I know. I, I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I'm a bling freak. Yeah. And, but it, but it's got to be done right. Like I said, like that black Cadillac earlier. With the gold grill recessed inside the chrome, where you could just it just barely tell it was gold. Oh, it was just it's so nice, so nice. And yeah, I mean, there's all of a couple rolls of tooling in the back that's like gold. It's like two stripes in yeah. the back seat. That's it. Yeah, that's it's it. Not really done at all. Uh, What's this bad boy coming out? I'm a sucker for pipes. Is that a uh, Lotus? It looks like a Matchbox. Tommaso. Ah. Yeah, I like that. Hey, one. how you doing, man? How you doing? I like that. Right. So yeah, let's see where are we I'd at. Buy that car there too. went the cabriolet. We are on to the second page. Like that is the De Tomaso Pantera, La Pantera. Really? The Panther. Coming at you. And right behind them are the two vets. Yep. The two sixty-two vets that I would definitely buy. Oh, oh, yeah, that red and white one. The red and white one. Oh, here's Randy. Randy's back. Randy's let's uh, back. let's lean that mic over toward Randy a little bit, Pop, and let's get a report on the uh, SRT stuff. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey. All right, we put some videos up on Facebook, so they're up there. You can get firsthand. It's like uh, it's like almost virtual reality. Yeah, not really, but <laughs> listeners need to go check that out. Actual reality, right? Yeah, no, that was uh, that was awesome. That was sweet. So, 
which 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 SRT did you get to ride in? We rode in the Charger. Oh, you rode in nice. your Charger? Yeah. Nice. Andrew uh, Andrew was in the front. I was in the back. And uh, this dude went nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm so sorry. We thought you were just yeah, pausing. Yeah, yeah. We were just pausing. <laughs> 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 Let's all just stop emotion. Let's all freeze frame. The, the, bad, the bad, yeah, thing cool. the bad thing about the bad thing about video is that it's actually 30 pictures put together. Right. So you got to you got to keep taking a lot of them oh, okay. for so it to move. Moving, you know. Right? <laughs> Old school flip book status. Go right. back to <laughs> go back to Edison's age. So, uh, how was your experience running horse. outside again? You were saying it was, oh, it was like great, virtual man. reality. It was, it was yeah. great. Our driver was John, and uh, man, he, the, the second he punched that gas, man, it was oh, you, off. You feel it in your bum, yeah, don't it was, you? It was off. It just man. throws it's you right kind of back in the seat. Back. Yeah. Just, like do donuts? Yeah, yeah, we were doing donuts. Oh. Yeah. And they, Pulled some G's. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, That's cool. Great. I can't wait to watch the video. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> How's your yeah. stomach now? Your stomach okay now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't that bad. But uh, no, it was a lot of screeching, a lot of smoke, a lot of burning in the air. It was good. Yes. It was good. Nothing like the smell of vulcanized rubber in the air. That's right. No, it's good. <laughs> it's fantastic. But it, it does. It does. Like like earlier. It's like napalm. But, I mean, even now, even now, pops has pops has his goose pimples going. I can see it from here. It's, I know. It's, oh, the, it's the car. It's, oh my god. It's the vet That's that just crazy. came in front of him. These. This was one of them he was looking at last night. It was like, this is just out of control. What a like, crazy reaction that it's that immediate. Oh, yeah, no, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Look, look at the goosebumps he's, on uh, No, oh. that's what I'm saying. He's, this is a man, this is why I brought Pops, because he is a man that loves his cars. He's a great guest. He's all about talking and sharing his stories. Prize time, top of the hour. Oh, wow, look at that. It is prize time. So, hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you are out there in the audience right now, prize uh, time. we are getting ready to wrap uh, our hour of coverage. We're going to go to a quick break, and uh, we're about to draw our winner for the prize wheel. So, if you are out there and you are listening, uh, Liam Connolly, Liam Connolly. You are a little the winner. insider trading here, but, yeah. but he won it fair and square. It was random. Can we put one of these Corvettes, either the black one or the red one, up on the wheel and give it, let me have a spin? Uh, yeah. Please. I will write Corvette on there just for you and let you spin. How about that, Pop? Okay. Um, and if you win that Corvette, I'll make sure that you get one someday. That's the car Visa or Discovery. <laughs> I'm not guaranteeing that's pretty the bold. That's a pretty bold statement. I man. did not say that I would purchase you a Corvette. I said that I would I would assure the fact that you get one one day. How that ends up in your hands, I have no idea. Don't have any idea. <laughs> I wouldn't ask either how it ended up in your hands. I would just accept the Corvette. Uh, <laughs> and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, speaking about accepting things, we must accept the fact that we are at the end of another hour of coverage here at the fantastic Mika Model yeah. Auction, live from Houston, Texas, yeah. right here at NRG Arena. Thank you so much to David Morton. Thank you so much to the Mika family, the whole Mika family for always having us. They were just here doing a viral video with us. It's fantastic. They try and throw us out there as much as possible. Stay tuned through the audio loop. You'll hear some great music, everything else. Stay Stay tuned for the next hour of upcoming coverage, the next hour of auction going, We're not going on, nowhere. And, the live videos uh, on Facebook. and the live videos on Facebook, stuff like that. Go out and check out Randy and Andrew and the SRTs blasting around doing crazy things. Hellcat. Hellcat. Hell, the Hellcats. The Hellcats that we were talking yeah. about. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure to go by, download the Dudes and Beer app from the Dudes and Beer store. Um, make sure that you chat with us live. Make sure that you pay attention. Uh, listen for your name. Uh, if you are here live on site, you must be present to win. If you are here live on site, you get to come spin the prize wheel. So we will see you soon, everybody. Stay tuned for more live coverage from the auction floor as well as interviews direct from the Mikamoto Auction in Houston, Texas, right here on the Dudes and Beer Podcast. 
To listen to our audio streams and chat with us live, download the official Dudes and Beer app for both Android and iDevices available on the Google Play and iTunes markets. Dudes and Beer is a proud member of the Revolution Digital Group family of podcasts. Thanks for listening, everybody. And until next time, drink responsibly. Thank you.